At this time, we'll have an introduction of keynote speaker by Brother Steve for Spring 2000. We'll also have another call.
folks had a chance to see, and so on. So I got a few slides I want to share with you. And who's the timekeeper? They told me they're going to kick me on the stage and talk to you. So, so I'll, I'll keep an eye on you as well. So why don't we get started, see? Thank you so much for that introduction. So again, leadership is something that I've always loved, always aspired to, and, and just and, and actually enjoyed. So when I arrived December 10th, 2012, in Atlanta, literally the headlines said, what's, what, what, what's going wrong at Mark, the Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit Authority? Uh, people are literally protesting in the streets, saying that everything is going bad in this transit system. Uh, in fact, there were commentators who said that it is the worst run government agency anywhere in the country. Uh, so, and I walk in as a guy who was coming from San Antonio, had run a few things uh, before, but quite literally one of the folks in the state legislature who was over public transit said that if they hire this guy, Parker, out of San Antonio, the relationships with the government's going to be even tougher. And they want their own guy who is an internal person. So it's like, welcome to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I've always gone by and read and really embraced people who have run lots of different organizations, did, just who wrap themselves in leadership. Dr. Mae Jameson is one of the folks who uh, I, I always looked up to. Never be limited by other people's limited imaginations, is what she said, and I embraced that as a kid growing up in Petersburg. So as soon as I got to BCU, I jumped in. Uh, jumped in. Now, now a lot of people make fun of me about this picture. Now this is <laughs> see, it says, Keith Parker, president of the Black Caucus. Now some of these fools who are they call themselves my friends say I look like Carlton from the Fresh Prince. <laughs> but jump right into leadership. Within the first two weeks of me being on campus back in 1984, I joined the movement to help the VCU and protest VCU for being invested in South Africa. Mm. And we started looking at how can we make the plight of black students better here uh, in Richmond. Brother Ed McBeth, who joined Omega Chapters, was mentioned, and I led the effort to bring the Office of Minority Student Affairs, I think it's now called the Office of Multicultural Affairs, and we did that in protest. In fact, I was involved in so many different protests, I had later found out that they had a full file on me, that they were following me, to make sure that if I slipped up in any way, they were going to get rid of me. So it was very interesting. So Brother McBeth and I uh, followed each other. He was president of the Black Caucus. I followed him. And we brought other things to this campus, including what's now is that outdoor block show that has now been institutionalized. We formed it, and a number of other major, major things we now uh, enjoy here as black students at VCU. But the coolest part, of course, it's Fletcher. <laughs> so my line brothers are here, Spud and Bees, y'all stand up. So we play Spring 85. Uh, blood, sweat, and tears, and that was the beginning for me of what was truly the transformational time at, at BCU. And quickly tried to jump into leadership uh, with the fraternity as well. So here was one of the years we stepped, and one of the brothers who was extremely impactful for me during that time as well was Terry Brant. You all know Terry. Terry's always been this visionary, innovative thinker. And Terry's talking about economic development transformational development, Brantland, way back then. It wasn't just an ego thing, but Brantland was something he envisioned about how you can bring live, work, and play communities. And I listened to that and think that it actually impacted some of the business we did in Marta 20 years later. And this is the brother Napoleon Peoples, who was a captain of Ryan. Brother Pete was one of those folks I would go to all the time. He's not in here, is he? I owe people a hundred dollars. <laughs> it was a time I was struck, uh, struggling, making ends meet, and I even thought about not quitting school but delaying a little bit. And Pete gave me a hundred bucks and said, "Look, I don't care how you spend it, but I don't even thinking about going anywhere." So that Office of Minority Student Affairs that I talked about, 
Pete eventually became the executive director. So I paid him back and more with that hundred than a hundred bucks he gave me. So Pete is one of those folks I came to and learned from throughout my journey at VCU. Now here's that blood, sweat, and tears the line. There's a brother, uh, Edmonds, Spud, myself, and our dean, Dean Shalom. And Mike, I think they told me that they made him dean because he would drop lamps if, uh, if, if he were allowed to just be a regular brother. And so they, I think they protected us by making him the dean. <laughs> but Mike was the most organized person, and, I, and, and he ran our line the way you would run a Fortune 500 company. And Mike made sure we had all the things we needed, but we met all the people we needed as well. Mm -hmm. And so his line, so they called him Shalomar because it was second time around. You know, Mike did not make it the first time he played. And, and then he joined the uh, list of Europe. So we had to scream out this greeting. Dean Shalomar, S is for your sinister ways. H A L is for the laughter you bring each day. A is for the academics you stress. M and A are for the mind and attitude we must possess. All the respect we have for the big brothers of Fist of Fury, you being Shalomar, a double, double nasty cute. And that's what we had to go out there and greet every day. And this brother made us, we thought we were about to go over. We had gone through five weeks of pleasure, and then we thought we were ready to go over. Being easy, we are ready to celebrate. And instead, he put us on a road trip. And we went all around the state. We're brothers, just everywhere uh, Hampton, uh, UVA, Beta Lambda Lambda at JMU. Just all around. Because of that, when we went over, everybody in the state knew us. Everybody. And plus, the night we went online, it was the night of third district meetings, and more than 200 brothers got a chance to see us. Mm -hmm. So to this day, I have traveled all over this country. I've been challenged as a brother less than five times because no matter where I go, there are five other brothers because of Mike Bean, I mean, not third district brothers because of Mike Beeman, who knew us and said, that brother's good. Mm -hmm. Next year. But leadership, again, affords all these leadership things. Being here in, uh, at, at Phi Delta on VCU's campus. And so then started my journey of learning all around the country. And so I had a chance to meet with, learn from leaders just throughout. Starting in, in Richmond, I went from intern to deputy CEO at the Greater Richmond, in Greater Richmond Transit Company in about two years and then decided I wanted to run things in other places. So made that jump from Richmond to California, back to Richmond, to Washington State, to North Carolina, to Texas, to Atlanta. CEO, youngest one in the nation multiple times, uh, and learning from all these incredible leaders. You keep going. Including Tim Kane, who at the time was a city council member here in Richmond, worked with him when I was an intern. And eventually, of course, he became senator, governor. This is a, a former mayor in Charlotte, eventually became governor. He was my first chairman of the board in Charlotte. This brother, Anthony Fox, became a, 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 a mayor in Charlotte as well, and a member of the Obama administration, the Department of Transportation. This brother also got very close to knowing, and he actually was a brother, uh, Pat Cannon. And Pat was a cautionary tale because he zoomed up to leadership and then took a bribe, and as a result spent time in prison, then came back, and now he's shown reclamation and shown how you can be resilient. This brother I've worked with closely in San Antonio. He was a mayor and eventually became a member of the Obama administration as HUD secretary. Andy Young, when I got to Atlanta, become a close confidant and someone I could depend on for all sorts of advice. Kasim Reed, mayor of Atlanta. Andre Dickens, another one of the mayors. Keisha Lance Bottoms, as well as the head of the Federal Reserve Bank, Chambers of Commerce, and so forth. And one of my favorites, John Lewis, I used to meet with Congressman Lewis three, four times a year uh, for advice, counsel, and so forth. And then, of course, President Carter, who I spent quite a bit of time with and, again, shared wisdom, ideas, how you can get things done. And many others 
the former governors, uh, Stacey Abrams, many of these folks had a chance again to help me to craft my style of leadership. But once you become a leader, I think you owe it to yourself and others to teach others how to become leaders in their own way. And so all around this country, what I'm most proud of in my leadership journey are the number of people who were on my teams who are now presidents, CEOs of organizations all over the country. Gail Spoiler out in Washington State. You, you all know Matt Tucker uh, was my former college roommate. I introduced Matt to Garfield Reed's mother who worked at GRTC and Matt uh, eventually became CEO of one of the transit authorities in, in, uh, San, in San Diego. And literally two, three dozen different people who are transit CEOs and others around the country, including you see that brother over there, Freddie Fuller. Uh, Fred, is Freddie in here? Freddie Dog. Uh, worked with us and, and now one of the most impactful leaders in, in the transportation industry. Thank you, going to And Eldridge Coles is a guy who I had a chance to work with, and Andy, you know Eldridge. Uh, 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 Andy worked in, in Richmond as, a, uh, as one of our folks for many years. And Eldridge Coles came to me as a 57 year old, so he was ready to retire. And we met, and he and we, we talked about what's, what the things he wanted to do to try to move forward and do more in his career. And we convinced him to stay on. And 14 years later, at the tender age of 71, he became CEO of the Greater Richmond Transit Company. But as I mentioned, that move to Atlanta, what were some of the things we were able to do? Go. So when I got there, my CFO came and met with me on the first day and said, Keith, we're losing $25 million a day, and within seven years, we're going, I'm sorry, $25 million a year, and within seven years, we're going to lose a quarter of a billion dollars. And what the approach we took is the approach we've taken at every major opportunity. Take care of the team, take care of the customers, and financial health will follow. Within six months, we transformed that $25 million deficit to a $9 million surplus. And instead of being bankrupt within five to seven years, I left them when I retired with a $250 million surplus. As a result of some of the successes we had, as uh, Brother Forbes mentioned, we are able to win lots of awards and feature me on a few different things. But always keeping in mind the leadership principles had here, developed here in Phi Delta. And so we were able to really transform the transit system and then decided, well, what's going to be next? And so, and so what, how many of you have either shopped at or donated to a Goodwill? So everybody, right? How many of you know what we do with the profits? We use it for economic development. So we, I'm sorry, we use it for workforce development. We take the money from work from the profits of, of the retail stores. We use that to help people train and prepare for jobs. And, over, and Atlanta has the unfortunate uh, character, has the unfortunate distinction of being the worst place in the United States of America to be born poor. If you're born in certain zip codes in Atlanta, you have a 96% chance of being born in poverty, living your entire life in poverty, and dying in poverty 20 years sooner than people who live just two to three miles away. And so my goal was to move people out of poverty. So our workforce development efforts over the last four years, we've helped over 100,000 people in Atlanta find jobs and move more than 40,000 families out of poverty into the middle class. So with that, getting more awards followed. And one of the things that when I reflect on all of this journey, the pieces that make us feel most proud as the kid who they were investigating, following around, seeing if I was going to do anything wrong, seeing potentially kick me out of school, and eventually coming back full circle, and seeing the polling peoples get that job as the head of the Office of Minority Student Affairs and being able to look out over the audience uh, when I was on stage as rector and seeing people like Steve Wilson's son uh, in the audience and many others. But the one that really got me was this one. Frank Dunn, 
brother who is legendary in his own right, having my signature on his diploma. <laughs> I just want to thank you all for the time. I wish my family could be here. They are back in Atlanta, spending my money, uh, doing lots of other things. And some of you who follow me on Facebook know this is my dog right here. This little dude following his dad's footsteps. He's a fourth grader in the second highest rated private school in the state of Georgia. And just recently, he was named, he, he won an election as vice president of the student body as a fourth grade. <laughs> in this scroll, I'll show just some of the folks we've had a chance to see in this journey. Uh, you'll recognize some of the governors there and the, uh, the mayor of, uh, of, of Richmond. You all know Dikembe Mutombo. It's my man, Blair Underwood, and I uh, went to the same high school. Of course, you saw President Carter. Kamala Harris just had a chance to meet her about six weeks ago. That's Will Packer. And then, of course, T.I. And then this dude, Boris Kojo, who is asking me for advice on how to look better. <laughs> uh, Killer Mike. And just a lot of other folks that, in my journey, uh, have had a chance really to meet these folks. And as Kipling says, when you can walk with kings but not lose a common touch, you'll be a man, my son. And with that, thank you all very much.